Hey, this is Tony Babcock, the voice of Duran Dane, and you're watching Baku Talk. Hello, brawlers, and welcome back to the Baku Talk and Longer podcast. I'm Haru Ren, and I got another guest here for you today. He is an award winning actor. He is part of the improv duo Two Live Queers, but he is also known in Bakugan as Duran Dane. So here he is, the voice of Duran Dane himself, Tony Babcock. How are you doing, man? Hey. I'm doing really well. Thanks for having me on. Thank you so much for reaching out. It was such a surprise when you、uh, reached out. It was right after I posted the、uh, interview with the voice of Gorthy on Hayden Finkelstein. And now、yeah. we got Tony Babcock, the voice of Duran Dane, in here. <laughs> yeah, well, it was great. It was serendipity. I just literally, like, you just popped onto my, into my world somehow. And I'd, I'd seen some,、uh, obviously, some fellow actors on your, on your awesome show. And I thought, you know what? I'm going to reach out and,、uh, you know, see if we can、uh, hang out. And then you were like, let's do it. <laughs> yeah, I'm so glad that we can actually make this happen, especially with like, conflicting schedules and all that. But I'm very glad that we, had, that we、uh, managed to have the time to do it.、Uh, so, like,、uh, so, like, It's such an amazing thing. Like,、uh, like, almost, like, I'm usually the one that reaches out to、uh, the Bakugan <laughs> actors, but now, but now it's uh, uh, for a change. I saved you, I saved you a step.、Out. I saved you a step, right? <laughs> yes, <laughs> definitely. I'm super honored. Thank you so much for coming on. Yeah, well, thank you for having me.、Uh, so, first of all, how's Bakugan treating you? It's uh, uh, the voice of Duran Dane.、Uh, Duran Dane, obviously, a character who's an aspiring a-、uh, child actor,、uh, sometimes get, gets in the way of the awesome bra- brawlers a little bit.、Uh, but but、uh, overall, pretty funny, funny villain, pretty much.、Uh, so,、oh, yeah. how's that role been treating you? Oh, I, I mean, Duran is my, one of my favorite roles I've ever done. He is such a joy to voice.、Um, it, 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 the cool thing about this character is that, first of all, he, like you said, he's an aspiring child actor, which already is so. So、funny, and he's got this. He wears this like obnoxious ascot tie, and then he just literally his whole life is about being famous.、Uh, which, you know, which child does not want to be famous in the world today, exactly?、Right? Exactly, so, <laughs> so he, he's just ridiculous. And I, I, you know, working with an amazing team on it, they allow me to have a lot of fun and take a lot of risks. and It's just, it's, it's really fun when you get a role that you get to like sink your teeth into and, and try new things. And, and,、uh, yeah, so I'm just really, I'm really digging it. And he, I like to say he's like a bad rash. He just keeps coming back and he does. He like goes away for a little while and then he's back again and then he goes away and then he's back again. So it's, it's just been, it's been a joy. He's such a funny antagonist. He's like the comedic villain that just comes back every time to like haunt the awesome brothers, annoy them a little bit, and then、uh, he just and then he just leaves and does、uh, until he comes back. All of a sudden,、uh, he, there's some, there's like a, quite a mystery about him at first when he first appeared in like the ninth episode, I think. It's either the eighth or the ninth around there, but he traps Dan and Winton in the basement of a. Made up house and put and、yes. then puts them through death traps. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's like、uh, it's like Saw for, for, for young audiences. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm, gl- yeah. I, I'm very glad that you made that comparison because that's literally what I thought. I like when Winton and Dan was going through that, I'm just like, is Duran Dane kind of like Jigsaw or something? Or like, but or,、totally. is, or is Benton Jigsaw and Duran Dane is like the pig man? Yes, I think, I think it's both. I think, I think Duran Dane is an aspiring actor, but he's also an aspiring jigsaw. I think he like, wants to. Yeah, but no, you're right. It so, is sort of like a misdirect, right? Because we, we, meet, we meet Duran in a different circumstance, and he's like, we're meeting him playing a character, essentially. And that was what was so fun about this, about this episode is that, like, this first episode, this premiere, is that there's sort of like the side of Duran that is, you know, you think is one thing, and then there's a complete. Twist, and then you're like, and then it was like, oh, this is the actual Duran. And I remember、uh, speaking with the director about this and, and talking about how to like craft those two sides of this. Of this character, and then we would always revisit like how he sort of first appeared versus like who he actually is. And I remember that being a really fun thing that we were always tracking. When you say that,、uh, and then the next time that Duran appears, He appears、uh, where he's trying to brawl with Dan because Dan couldn't evolve Drago. But then we see, like, oh, I was, hired. I was hired. I was just playing a role. And we think we see this sweet side of him or this really scared side. 
and then all of a sudden it's just another act it's just another acting uh oh, yeah. thing. It's just another yeah, way to treat the awesome brawlers. Just- I think he's always playing a role. Like, I think he, and that's sort of what we chatted about. We talked about, like, how manipulative he is as a villain and how he literally uses his acting as a tool. That's basically his his weapon, is that he's like, I will just take on whatever role I need to to get whatever I want in every situation. Have there and, ever been a t- Have there ever been any kind of ways where, like, the, uh, a character is using acting as a way to uh, weaponize against the good guys, right? So not until really Duran Dane, and I'm so grateful because I literally was like, as growing up as a, I was also a child actor, by the way. I started acting uh, when I was five in in on stage. Oh wow! And yeah, so I it, so I really resonate with this character. It was like brought to me like divine intervention gave me this role. But uh, I I sort of was like, oh, I resonate with this. I used to use acting as a kid to manipulate people. I used to like <laughs> pretend I was upset about things to get what I wanted. Like I was like. I see what's happening here. This is like art imitating life. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, that, that that's that is very cool, and I, it's really great how you're able to relate to the character because it's how you make it work, right? When you say that uh, Duran Dane is like an aspiring actor slash jigsaw, I think you mean an aspiring Tobin Bell. <laughs> yeah. Totally, totally an aspiring Tobin Bell. <laughs> I think um, that's a perfect and- way to describe his first appearance, right? <laughs> <laughs> oh, completely. And that's sort of what it's like, right? It's like this weird, like, escape room meets this sort of, you know, uh, Hunger Games. Like, it's like, it's just such a really, really interesting dynamic. And I remember reading the script. I remember when I first got the script. This was quite a while ago when we, when, for the first appearance. And I remember oh, yes, getting the script like and, and I remember reading through and thinking like, oh, uh, thinking it was one thing. And then when the, you know, when I started to kind of put together that last scene, when he's like, all of a sudden he's like, oh, thank you, sir. Like all of a sudden he's this little sort of timid character with Benton and you're like, oh, interesting. Okay. okay so this is like, th- this is deep. I'm like, this is deep, Bakugan. Like you're really like bringing in the layers here. <laughs> I know. There was like so, there was like a lot of layers to Duran for some reason that we didn't expect expect him to have like layers of and, uh, and yeah. like we well, just thought he was just another throwaway secondary antagonist character but that but it uh, turns out he actually does have a little bit of character to him like a little bit of figuring out and all that yep and that's i mean again like i said he's like a bad rash he keeps coming back in different contexts like i think and it, to a point where the characters are like oh you again like they're they're almost like commenting on it too they're like you're back like it's that kid again right and i think that's sort of indicative of Duran's sort of trajectory or his character trajectory is that he sort of like always wants to be everywhere. And so I think the writers were really picking up on this. And every time that they were writing their way through the series and they were like, oh, we need like a villain here. We need some, they were like, let's bring in Duran. And in fact, you know, I I actually had some conversations with some of the creative team where it was like, yeah, that's exactly what happened when we created this character. It's like, we constantly were like bringing Duran back because it just was like, he's a great character to put back because we've established established that he wants to be everywhere and with everyone that has anything to do with fame or notoriety or recognition or awards or anything like that he's there yes definitely it's definitely a really good uh it's definitely a really good uh description of what kind of character he is uh someone who's like very deep but also like you say a bad rat that just keeps coming back uh when when like uh have you have you ever seen uh duran dane's uh character card like uh, the hero card in like the bakugan tcg game yes i have i have (laughs) <laughs> what was what was your reaction to it? Because like it's a ele- it costs eleven to play, but he deals like five damage and it gives double strike all the time. <laughs> I mean, I I really think, it, like, I had such a good time when I saw that. I thought to myself, like, there was, like, a moment of pride. I looked at it, and I was like, yeah, this is, like, Duran would be so happy right now. Like, that sort of was my reaction. Like, he would just love that he has a card. And I think it's funny because a lot of my life as an actor now, even when I'm working on other projects... I feel like I'm always, like, there's, like, a little Duran inside of me all the time, like, thinking, like, is this a side of me? Like, you know, is this a side of me that likes accolades? Do I want to see myself on a card? Like... (laughs) And so he's pretty much embedded into your heart. <laughs> oh, completely. And you know what? It's funny because the the uh, the director, the creative team I was working with, they said the same thing. They're like, you literally like 
They're like, you don't even have to try to get into this character. This character's there. And I'm like, because, you know, we get set up for, like, some of his longer episodes. And often what happens when we work on this show, you've probably heard before, is that depending on your length of character, your length of character in the episode, you're you're recording earlier in the day. So often what yes. happens is, like, we will go in and if, like, you know, I had a, I had one of my episodes where he's in basically the entire thing. The, the ninth episode, yes, but there was another one where he was heavily featured. And... I was one of the first to come in and it was early in the morning and I remember it was like a doozy. It's like, I don't know if you recall and I can't pinpoint the exact episode, but there was this episode that is like the emotional roller coaster of Duran. He's like screaming, he's sad, he's crying. He's like, like there's literally like every emotion possible. Oh and yes. Yes. I think I know what you're talking about. Yeah. Yeah. And so he's like everywhere. And I remember coming in and I was just so excited to do this episode. And so they were expecting like having to, you know, give a lot of direction. And I sort of came in and I had a really fun idea in my mind of like how I wanted to play the sort of nuances of his duality in this episode. And I came in and I did it and they were like, and that's when they were like, because they didn't really have to give me much direction on that episode. And I remember the director being like, do you like... She's like, are you like Duran in the morning before you come here? I'm like, yeah, this character is literally in me. I'm like, I was this character in like a different world. Like, there, like I feel so, even today, I feel like, you know, I just, I'm so in touch with him. And as much as he's dramatic and he's a lot and he's an antagonist, I think we all can identify with him if we really like, there, you know, there's all of us that wants to, he just wants to be loved, right? He just wants mm-hmm. to be adored and loved and... You know, he wears this ascot and it's like, it's just, to me, that's sort of indicative of like his life. Like he just wants to be this sort of, you know, excitable, like a revered character. And underneath it is all of this insecurity. And that's what you see uh, in this episode. You see that other side of him. Yeah, I definitely, I think I do remember that episode. Yes, I know, like I know exactly what, which one you're talking about. Uh, but what, but speak, but uh, when you're speaking of like uh, Duran and the character and what you're uh, doing with like, the script and stuff, when you first got the character of uh, Duran, uh, what uh, I know we talked to like various other voice actors, like uh, we talked to Julius. He he originally auditioned for Shun. Hayden Frankenstein auditioned for a lot of uh, different roles. Uh, what did you originally audition for? What did you, what role did you specifically really wanted when you first auditioned? So I have a really funny story to tell you, and the answer is none. And I am very lucky that I might be one of the only actors in Bakugan history that was offered this role without really? an audition. But let me explain. And I was on uh, I was on Beyblade, so I was on Beyblade for a while. Yeah, and I was playing uh, I was playing uh, Takanosuke on Beyblade, which was so much fun. And I that that I auditioned for. I auditioned for that, and that was like. A, quite a few years before Bakugan. And so I remember going into that audition and I remember just just basically I was like coming in and I was like, I'm going to try something really off the wall. Like, I don't know if this is the right choice, but what do I have to lose, right? And so I went in there and I played this really interesting take on this character who's just like annoying and knows it and loves it. And that was sort of Takanosuke in a nutshell. Like, again, I get pigeonholed for annoying characters. That's fine. I'm all for it. But I came in and I did this really weird, like, high-pitched voice, and he was just so grating and annoying. And I thought to myself, this is either going to tank or do really well. And thankfully, it was the second, and I got offered that role. So then, the casting director from Beyblade remembered me after working on as Takanosuke, and literally one day called my agent, and my agent was like, Hey, um, here's a picture of Duran Dane. You're playing this character and you start on Monday. <laughs> it's like, I was like, this never happens. Like, no actor ever gets this. And I remember feeling so excited and thinking, to your point, that it was going to be one episode. I thought, you know, this is one of those one off, like, enemy characters, antagonists. I'll go in, I'll have fun. It's all good. Like, I was excited. And then when it was like, I got to the end of the record and they were like, they were, and I was like, can I ask you something? And they were like, sure. And I'm like, is this character coming back? Because it really seems like he is. And they're like, oh, he'll be back a lot. <laughs> it's like, <laughs> it was just like, it was awesome. I remember, I still remember it to this day as one of the highlights of my career. Because when you get to get something without auditioning, it's just like a cherry on top. 
that's gotta be like really amazing how you get offered a role that they think that you're perfect for and uh and you just go at it and it turns and it turns out to be real and it turns out to be really enjoying and really fun i definitely yeah. do think that you played the role very perfectly you're ver- uh, perfect for it's, role. It's, i'm not saying you're annoying <laughs> i'm not like, saying you're annoying but I'm just, annoying, I'm just right? saying you just played yeah. a character like really good <laughs> i appreciate that well it was a lot of fun and you know what takanasuke on beyblade was a lot of fun as well and similar had that feeling of like that sort of antagonist like that sort of tends to be my my go-to that was more charactery antagonist so yeah it was great it was so much fun honestly and i i felt so honored i oh no he worked on beyblade that's the enemy <laughs> <laughs> i know a lot of people long gone don't, know, don't worry <laughs> <laughs> uh, but uh, no no in all seriousness like a lot of people in the community like really like beyblade and like both like kimbo likes beyblade and uh back yes. Bakugan as well so there's no there's no tribalism i'm just like, <laughs> jokes <laughs> But uh, I get but, I get regard- but uh, regarding the rant, I remember there was one episode that I really, really enjoyed. It was like a filler episode, but uh, a little bit. But it was still like pretty humorous, pretty funny. It was where like Duran uh, became a director and he went to star in the movie because the the uh, the the uh, Lord of Pakistan over here wanted to uh-huh. have the shoot there or something like that. And, yes, and like uh, Duran wa- uh, wanted to direct. He wanted to like star in it as well, and it turns into like this really huge fight between the Lord Bracken, Lord Bracken, and Duran. Uh, oh yeah. So, so obviously, Lord Bracken is voiced by Blake Johnson. Uh, and uh, so tell so tell me about that. So tell me about that specific episode. How how was it like working on that uh, particular uh, episode of uh, for Duran, <laughs> being that yeah. humorous well- like that. Oh my gosh, I love I loved that episode. I mean, it first of all, it I was so like I had such mad respect for the writers for for bringing Duran in for that because it was sort of like such a such a great obvious choice. Like D- this was like Duran's moment and it's like it it's just so funny to to see and I think that was one of the pre uh, I might be wrong but I think that was one of the precursors to the other episode I was talking about when he has his big meltdown and the, all of mm-hmm. that. But in this episode, it was really interesting because it was very much like built around that conflict. And you're for the first time, you're really seeing Duran like fighting for the lead and fighting for the spotlight. And like there's this this energy there. And I thought that for me anyway, it was it it brought back a lot of memories again, uh, like not to criticize myself, but as a kid, like I was really bossy. Like I was a bossy kid. Like I'd be in the group of kids and I'd be like, I'm going to be the leader. <laughs> and so I'm working on that episode and I'm like, this is totally like, I am so being typecast right now and they don't even know it. Um, it was a really fun episode to work on. It was really cool to, to kind of put, put Duran in that leadership role and kind of see him work, so to speak, like what he would do in that position. Um, Yeah. And it was just, again, working with these awesome actors, you know, a lot of the times we're either seeing them in passing or we're just hearing them in our ears and just like, also just honoring their work. Like, you know, the show has really great actors. You've met many of them. They're, they're just really great people. They bring a lot of love to their work, a lot of passion and being able to riff off of that is a lot of fun. Yeah, I definitely. Yeah, they're definitely really great actors. You, yeah, you included. I know Abakugan has like a lot of like great, uh, great voice acting. A uh, lot, lot of uh, passionate people uh, that get some voice acting. I really have an appreciation lately for voice actors uh, because, like, uh, me growing up, I grew up watch- watching Sam Vincent. Uh, I don't know if you know him. Uh, James Earl Taylor uh, and. Mm. Uh, just so just like so many different voice actors dan green eric stewart uh but i'm one but i'm wondering who did you grow up with uh influencing voice act your uh your voice acting career <laughs> you know what i'm laughing because i'm i'm about to like date myself like you're gonna like be like oh yeah well, you probably already know how old i am but um i actually for me it's it's uh it's bob bergen like for me it's completely bob bergen bob, bob bergen, bergen. Bob bergen. Uh, who's like most famously Porky Pig. Um, and 
you know what? He, uh, I met him. I got to meet him in really? New York, and it was absolutely. It's the same uh, weekend that I met Lily Tomlin. I met a hu huge amount of incredible voice actors. Nancy Cartwright, like some of the greats, right? Like Nancy Cartwright, who like never has to work a day in her life because Bart Simpson is like her nest egg. Um, <laughs> yes, <laughs> but I, uh, I think the biggest thing with um the biggest thing with bob bergen in uh, just really quickly is that and by the way like look up bob bergen because like he does a lot like he's and he still does a lot yeah, and to I this day he's, him, yes <laughs> yeah he's now a mentor like i you know i chat with him but through a happenstance i ended up being on the um actually not through a happenstance through being on bakugan and some other voice stuff that i work on i got i got invited to be a judge at the voice arts awards in new york city a few years ago before in the before times before covid when people got together like we're doing again now um and i was there and i got a chance to meet a lot of the a lot of the big uh voice actors who were there but i saw i scoped out bob bergen immediately and i was like i need to meet him today like i need to make this happen <laughs> and i ended up like sitting down with him at an after party we chatted for like three hours like it was amazing he's like the nicest guy but i think what's so interesting about him is that he wanted porky pig he was not the original porky pig and he wanted that role like it was like his like life's mission was to be porky pig so I won't go into the full story, but he essentially like conned his way into the offices of the studio that was like, you know, recording it with the guy that was Porky Pig. And he basically pretended to be like an intern in order to get upstairs. And then he like introduced himself to the guy and he's like, I will be taking your job when you retire. And the guy was like, you will, will you? And he literally just like, he, he trained with him. He spent all his money training with this guy every week for like years. And then when the time came for that guy to retire and they were like, who's going to replace you? He was like Bob Bergen, like the guy, like, like, ha like he literally manifested and took action on that desire. And he's just like, it's like phenomenal. So I had to meet him and be like, can you please tell me all of like all of your ways? Like, how do you do this? Like, what what's your intention? How do you get like how how do you sort of sort what is your joy like when you're in the booth like how do you embody a character how do you like i wanted to know everything right and to a point where he was like laughing because i was just asking so many questions um but he's great and he's a mentor and he's helped me continue to evolve my craft and and he's just phenomenal that's so right I, I know that was a really big answer that's a that it's a that's an amazing story though. That's really great how you were able to meet Bob Bergen, Bergen and he and he was able to pass on so much knowledge to you. It it was honestly it was mind blowing. Like I was that was the day where I started really taking. I, I've always taken acting seriously, but that was the day where like I was like this is like this is a craft that needs to be honored that needs to be really taken seriously. And, uh, and that has done me well, like it's led me to a lot of other, other work and, and, you know, just a real deep passion for voice acting even more. Yes, definitely. And I can really tell, uh, and I, and you know, that, those are kind of stories I really love to hear because, uh, voice acting and at the end of the day is a really, is a really huge art, uh, huge art form. And, uh, it, definitely should be respected definitely should be appreciated a lot more uh because without what because like without voice acting uh you'd be watching something or playing something on mute and there would be no depth or layer to the character right because the voice is what really captivates the character into an engagement with the audience right absolutely it, it's incredible and it's such a fun art form to study and learn and and play in because it's it's you and the mic and you, you've got it. Like everything needs to come through there. Like it's just so fascinating. A lot of I know a lot of people are saying, "Oh, voice acting so easy. You just you just speak in the mic." And I'm like, "No, there's so much into that. Like I like I could never be a voice actor because I one I can't act, and two I can't do like so many different voices, and three my voice is just." annoying to hear <laughs> in general if i've taught you anything today you can be annoying and work in voice <laughs> I, I can play an annoying character in fact yes. like, like i have made it i have made it my life goal to like i want to get a, i want to get a role in bakugan i don't care if it's like a crowd i don't care if it's an extra i don't care if it's a one-time character i want to get my voice onto the show yes. <laughs> and well so, look like 
follow the footsteps of Bob Bergen or me and like make it happen. <laughs> Keep there, putting it out I, there and it will I happen. I did do it in one video. I did do it in one video actually. I was doing a review for Bakugan and uh, I re- and I remember like Athena uh, Emily Strange's character went really angry and I just did an Emperor Palpatine voice and then I tweeted it and I'm like, this is my audition tape. Put me, find me a character. <laughs> Yeah, I don't think they saw it, but you know, at least I tried. (laughs) You've got my vote. Thank you, thank you. (laughs) But but uh, yeah, that that uh, that was a very uh, great story, very good, uh, very great uh, voice acting, voice acting lesson story, and all that. But do you see yourself doing what you what Bob Bergen did? You know what? I do. I do. I, I think One day. maybe not for Porky Pig, but I I do think that the lesson there is in an industry, the acting industry can be very um, sporadic, like thing, you know, th- things can happen overnight and then things cannot happen for six months. Right. And that's sort of the nature of the beast. That's why I, I work in, like you mentioned before, I do improv, I do theater, I do film, I do voice. And I think one thing I've learned is like tenacity goes a long way in our industry, like a long way. And I, and I, you know, I think of the story of go- like what I mentioned to you when I was on the show that shall not be named. And I went in there and I did that voice, that unique, you know, high pitched voice. And it really served me well. And not only did it serve me well, but it led to Bakugan and it led to other things. And, you know, I think it's sort of like, I, I think the lesson that we can all take from this is like, if you want something, then you go for it and you don't stop and you you don't be afraid to like make a mistake in the process or take a risk or do something out of the box. And I think that's a really cool lesson that I will continue to take with me. And I do continue to take with me as a performer. That's a really great lesson. Ne- just never give up on yourself and just, you know, keep going. Yeah. And, you know, I got to say, like, I, I th- under that note, like, because that's my mantra, um, I recently created a series called Extreme Actor, which is a series that's all about the behind the scenes of being an actor. And I basically, like, go to extreme lengths to get into character. I go to medieval times to train as a knight so I can audition as a knight. Like, each episode has that sort of feel. And uh, I had a dream to create this show. And I basically just kept knocking on doors until someone would answer and i got a company on board to basically come in and and fund the project and they were a pretty major broadcaster in in canada bell bell tv bell five and they they helped me create it and then from there i was like okay well this show is really good like not from like a ego place it's like a really great show for people to watch it's a really feel-good show um I want to get it to a larger audience. So I ended up, again, knocking on doors until someone would answer. Uh, finally got in touch with a few people who then programmed it to a wider audience. And then, you know, it's so funny is you're gonna, it's going to sound like I keep getting offered things. This has only happened three times in my life. But then I get an, a message from Broadway and Broadway On Demand, which is the Netflix of Broadway. It's like a Broadway's version of Netflix. Mm-hmm. They get in touch with my agent and they go, we love this show. We want to program it and we want to put it on the air in the next two weeks. And And I was like... So it went on Broadway on demand and here's this big acting series that's like being heavily featured to 70,000 or I think it was 75,000 uh, subscribers on this on this streaming platform. So again, it's like, you you know what I mean? Like it was an idea and I just kept going and I kept knocking until people answered the door. You had an idea and you went for it. <laughs> that's it. And like, you know, know. it's <laughs> we can all learn from that. So I believe in you. It's going to happen. You're going to get on <laughs> Bakugan. <laughs> I really hope so, <laughs> but uh, as I said earl as I said earlier, you're part of the comedy duo uh, Two Life Queers. You also mentioned it uh, earlier as well. Uh, so, t- so uh, tell me about that. Uh, how how is uh, being a part of a how does being a part of comedy different from uh, the industry of acting? Give yeah, me, well, give me an insider into uh, into that. <laughs> totally. Well, first of all, uh, I've been doing improv for uh, I guess about twelve years. It's sort of been my uh, calling card in the industry. Like I, I tend to be called in for things that are improv based because it's heavily featured on my, on my, uh, resume and my materials. But, uh, I think the, the cool thing about improv, if, if you've never studied it or seen it is that everything's made up on the spot, everything's made up without any direction. And, uh, for me, like 
if if that sounds terrifying, it was for me at first too. Like I mentioned, I grew up on the stage. I was like the theater actor as a kid and as a teen, I was doing plays and I was like clutching to my script like it was a life jacket. Like that was my thing. As long as I had a script, I'm good. So I had auditioned for an improv troupe um, and was terrified and went in there and I thought it went terribly. I thought I bombed it. And then they again were like, you know, we'd love to see you again. And I came back and I ended up getting it. And then I was like, oh, crap, I better learn how to actually do improv now. Uh, and so I went and I studied improv and I became really fascinated with it. And I realized that my acting was 10 times stronger with like with the energy of improv behind it. And I started to realize acting is improv in, in many ways. You know, even when we're on the mic uh, for Bakugan and, and other shows, it's like, Yes, we're here. We've got a script. We're, you know, we're dubbing. There's a lot of like, there's a lot of structure, but within that you play and it's improv and you work on your instincts and you're sort of like, you're sort of improvising with the image on the screen in front of you because we're like dubbing these, these, um, these voices based on what we see. Right. Mm -hmm. And so you're kind of playing with, so I'm sort of improvising with Duran when I'm, when I'm, recording like i'm watching his character and it's all been like animated and i see it and i'm sort of like i'm going with like what i feel in the moment based on what he's doing um a little bit obviously some pre-planning and all of that but like i'm allowing myself to play and i think that that's sort of for me the connection between the two and why i love and why i'm on an improv troupe because it keeps me fresh and it keeps me out of my head and i think we can all like get out of our head more like we're all in our head especially the last three years Yes, definitely. So, in a way, improv has really helped you in your performance uh, for voice acting because you have to yeah. like be able to move with the character, as you say, right? Yeah. I know in, in when fact, I spoke to oh, yeah, De I, sorry, I know when I spoke to Devin uh, a long time uh, a while ago, he says that uh, he improvises some certain lines and like adds some stuff that's not even part of the script. So, yeah. uh, has has there ever been a situation where you've actually had to do that? Yes, uh, there have been. There have been. Uh, it actually happens quite often because we are uh, because we are dubbing from Japanese to English uh, with the show. There, a lot of the times, what will happen is like the lines won't fully match up, and so in the moment, we're also improvising with the creative team and going like, "What can we say here instead?" And a lot of the times, what will happen is they'll be like, "We're just trying to figure." They'll be on the mic and they'll go, "We're just trying to figure out what line would fit in here." And I'll say something like, "Do you mind if I try something?" And they're like, "Sure." And truth be told, when I say that, I actually don't know what I'm going to say. I just want to like, I want to see if I can improvise something in the moment. And so there's a lot of times where like, as Duran, it's sort of like, you know, I'll add a little bit of like, you know, he'll, he'll be like, yeah, like he'll have this little like, what? you know what? Like, <laughs> and, or like, there's just like little sort of thing that's not there, but it just feels so Duran. Um, and, and that's a good note too, is that every time before I record, um, I do a vocal warm up that's very improv based. And the last thing I do is I take Duran and I improvise with him. So like, I'll like, I'll literally just like sort of, uh, be like kind of saying things to a beat. So like, I'll have a, like a drum beat going and I'll, at first I'll just be like going like blah, 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 blah. And I'll get the like rhythm into my body. And then I'm like Duran and I'm like, I'm like, I like to terrorize. I'm a child actor. Like I just, I'm literally like improvising this like kind of Duran rap. Like, basically, <laughs> before I go into record. And it just, like, gets me into Duran, and it, like, it sort of puts his energy in me so that when I walk in to record... Because there's no, t like, there's no time in the film and TV and voiceover industry. There's no time to, like, say, let's just take a little while and figure this out. And, like, everything moves so fast. Mm -hmm. So you've got to sort of come in like warmed up you've got to come in like ready to deliver especially on those big episodes where like we're literally recording so many lines and we've got to do it so quickly and there's no time to do it. like they'll be like we've only got two takes like two takes max and we're like okay let's go and if you're not ready and warmed up that can be really terrifying oh yeah uh, i cannot imagine how terrifying that could could be 
just being told, hey, you have two takes. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, oh my God, I gotta, I gotta get this right. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And then your vocal, co- then you literally, like, phys- physiologically, you actually tense up and then your voice tenses up. So it's like, you've got to be relaxed. And so every time when I'm in, when I'm getting ready, like, I remember I had a, uh, when I was working on the other show, I'm just going to keep calling it the other show. You can call um, it I remember day, don't I- worry. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just kidding. I had a, like, a 6 a.m. or, no, sorry, an 8 a.m call and i remember i was i was sick and i didn't have a voice so i literally was up at four because that's the other thing you can't be like yeah i'm just not coming in today because i don't have a voice because everything's like been completely like worked out timing like deadlines all these things have to happen at a Mm. certain time so i remember getting up at like i think it was like 4 a.m and i did this like literally this three hour vocal warm-up that my vocal coach at the time was teaching me in terms of like this gentle sort of like voice activating warm-up for lack of a better term and by the time i rolled into the studio at eight i had been up for four hours and i was like okay and i'm like drinking like glycerin because glycerin can be really good for your vocal cords when you lose your voice and i'm like drinking tea and i'm like doing all these things and i do the record and then i walk out and they're like can we can we talk to you and i was like sure and i was like terrified i was like uh sure and i thought they were gonna be like this you you're you oh hello oh (laughs) the camera went out (laughs) What happened? I have no idea. <laughs> but okay. but uh, I guess I guess the I guess the people found out you were t- doing this and fired you on the spot. <laughs> yeah, they're like, no, you're not allowed. Um, okay, is it all good? Do I yeah, yeah, up you're all good. For those of you who are listening to the audio version of this, his uh, uh, t- Tony's uh, camera went out and he muted for a second. <laughs> You were in the middle. Uh, I think you were in the middle of uh, talking. I think you were in the middle of talking about uh, they. Uh, you finished the session. They went up to you. I think you were. I think you were thinking that you were going to get fired. <laughs> yeah, that is legit. What I was thinking. I was like, "Here we go." And then they called me in, and they were like, "They were like, really great work today. We know that this was a tough one for you, and you're not feeling well." And I was like, literally, like my heart <laughs> dropped, and I was like, "Okay, thank you, bye," and I left. <laughs> It's like, don't say anything else. Thank you, good. And I left and I was like, wow. I And then literally I was like, I am never getting sick again. And I was like drinking vitamin C drinks every day. And I was like, this is not... You know, that show, like, Beyblade was a lot of fun for me, but it was a huge learning curve. Like, even from day one, I remember I mentioned I came in with this really high voice, which, like, to this day, it's like, oh, I talk like this, right? That was my voice. And I learned that that voice is really difficult to sustain um yeah that sounds painful just listening to it (laughs) yeah so day one they were like yeah the voice isn't quite like it's got to be louder it's got to be stronger you've got to yell like people are loud on this show that's what they said to me after day one and i was like okay I'm getting a vocal coach today. I am making sure I can build up this voice so I never have the problem again. And that was sort of the beginning of my holistic journey in voice. Because if you talk to a lot of like voice actors who are, you know, worth their salt and work a lot, they'll talk a lot about like vocal, like their how they look after their voice. Mm Because it's a big thing. Like you, when you're voicing a lot, you and you know I've gotten started to get into audiobooks so like voicing a lot is a thing and you get to a point where if you don't take care of this it will literally just go away sometimes like your voice will just be gone for 2 weeks this is your so money you, maker right here <laughs> yeah so I'm now I'm like okay everything is about making sure this is okay and so you get the things you get the throat coat tea and you get the like you get all the things you need to make sure that this is here and you and so with that vocal coach what i was learning was i was learning how to make sure i was never using what's called my like throat or chest voice and that i was instead using my actual like resonant voice from my stomach and like it makes a huge difference because most people are really terrible at like yelling for example they yell from here and that's why they lose their voice so you can actually stop that when you start to learn like holistically how your voice works 
it's that really is, interesting yeah that is very cool that is very cool to like know and like a, an important lesson to like everybody who's aspiring to be a voice actor i know there are a lot of people in the bachman community who want to be voice actors and you know they look up to uh people like you and like uh jason and all and uh, all them people who voice in uh, bakugan and all that but i think the lesson that they really forget that uh forget or they don't take into account is really learning how to take care of your voice right it's just learning to take care of the vocal cords and all that because if you don't have this you don't have work right <laughs> because yeah you, yeah that's pretty much what voice work is that's the uh, that's it's literally in the title you can't talk you can't you won't you won't work in work in here yeah it's it's huge you know i think the biggest example of this for me was i was part of a, a video game series called black mirror which is not yes anything yes to, yeah nothing to do with the with the series that came out years before um but it was a a really fun challenge because it was a uh essentially two years of going into the recording booth for eight months of the year nine to five i was essentially working a nine to five mm -hmm. because each each uh each video game that i recorded as the as the protagonist was um literally like a binder this thick of of lines because it was we there were so many tracks the character can take it's a point and click and there's like the character will literally comment on everything you click on so i remember at first being like this is a dream job like i get to work nine to five every day eight months like i it's a it, you know the character is very much in my vocal register like it's it's a really sweet gig uh and then i remember getting about two weeks in and i was like oh this is work like especially when we started to get to the like character dying like the 45 ways the character can die and you're like you're going like Ugh! Ugh! and you're making all these sounds and you're like okay this is like this is serious like you're gonna do this every day for eight months you've got to be like a vocal like superhero and so i'm so grateful that like i was learning that lesson of looking after myself because i would not have been able to uh to withstand that that um that game and you know i was lucky being the protagonist that the one week i got sick doing the first game um and lost my voice i had some pull so i was able to take like production was able to pause the week for me which i was like I felt so bad about it. I was like, I'll be, I'll be better soon. I'll be better soon. And they're like, no, it's all good. We all needed a break anyway. But, but truth be told, you've got to show up and you've got to be able to be able to do it and mm -hmm. deliver. It's a very, it's a very, uh, how do you say, I don't want to say the wrong thing. Cutthroat industry or something predatory industry or so am i saying the, am i using the right words cut yeah, through industry i guess yeah uh, i mean it's sort of the idea of like seven people lined up behind you if you if you don't deliver yeah is is very much based in a lot of truth i think the thing is though is that the other side of that is like many things it's a relationship industry so you know for me i'm all about like making lasting relationships with people i'm all about like being easy to work with and that's been sort of my gold star my true north if you will through the industry for so many years i'm going into essentially uh you know i started when i was five right so i'm going into like my 30th basically my 30th year in as an actor mm. um which is nuts if you think about it but it's the way to, to have a long career is a diversify so let's say i do a little bit of everything so when voice gets slow i'm over to film or tv or improv um and b actually you know what that's b a is b easy to work with <laughs> like that is a like unless you are like you know tom cruise or emily blunt or like you know mindy cowling or like someone at the top like you and even so but unless you're like a a a list you've got to be so easy to work with that uh you become the obvious choice to work with because because of how easy you are to get along with and easy you are to direct that's key so I for anyone that. watching that wants to get into voice mm -hmm. work on your voice practice it every day but also be really easy to work with 
I know that uh, when the the, uh, Baku, the entire Bakugan cast, I know you guys have like a really fraternity relationship. You know, uh, I know. Uh, you know, uh, how is how is uh, your relationship with like the other cast? Uh, is there anybody in particular that you like really ha- really hang out with a lot or uh, talk or talk to or any- or anything? Because I know because I do know like uh, Devin Devin Mac who voices Winton. He uh, he's like really friendly. He seems like a mentor figure to like a lot of uh, a lot of the actors. So, so is there anyone in particular that you like working with? You know, uh, there there's a lot. Like the thing about the industry is, what's so interesting about about uh, working on anime is that you end up like I mentioned before that with a series like this, you're not always in, you're not often in the booth with anyone else. Just the way that they film this, you're really listening to people in your ears, but you're always passing people by. You're always like seeing them and you're always sort of like, you'll see each other at parties and events and you'll sort of be like, Hey, yeah. And you know, and you'll, you'll kind of have camaraderie about the show. I think the biggest thing, like for me, you know, I know, I know Jason, I mentioned to you, like Julius and I have worked together. Um, uh, you, Cal, who I think you you interviewed recently, yeah, we- uh, is, is a, a awesome guy. And we actually, you know, we've collaborated recently as well. Um, who else do I... A- Anna is great. I don't know if you've ever interviewed Anna, Sani, or, or Emily, of course, you mentioned. Like, so many, right? Like, that's the thing. It's like, it's a connected industry, and it's like, it, it's very much like, you get to know everyone, and, and it, it is very, um, uh, I almost want to say incestuous. Like, it's just like, everyone knows everyone. Like, it's just very connected. And I think that's the great thing about our industry. As much as it's cutthroat, especially in you know in the canadian side of the industry it can be really familial as well like Mm. when you when you get to know people like they've got your back yeah uh by the way anasani interview coming soon for those that are listening to this right now (laughs) Ah, awesome yeah yeah i do know uh, i do know and i've heard i have uh, heard of her and uh and uh, yeah i do know she's uh she does uh seem like seem like a really awesome person uh behind the scenes uh and you know what uh She's and you know what uh for people who are listening to this and have made it this far uh interview with her coming soon you don't know when but it's happening <laughs> i'll tell you that much yeah, exactly but uh it is happening. but uh but uh yeah uh going back going back to uh you like uh how how you say that uh, even though it's a cutthroat industry there is a, a, a matter of uh fraternity a uh a sort of camaraderie with uh, the voice actors. I feel like that is really important to, uh, in these days, especially with uh, like COVID and all that. And then there's like companies that want to take advantage of voice actors. And then there's that, there's that strike that's happening or something uh, with Actra or, yeah. something, or something like that. Yeah. I think it's very important that uh, voice actors like stick together and all that, you know, help each other, like find work and, and, uh, and everything. Holy crap! I'm losing my voice, <laughs> but which is not which get is not good. Some, uh, <laughs> yeah, get the, some glycerin. It's a good thing I have tea. <laughs> there you go. It's all about the tea and the glycerin, right? Yes. Um, yeah, it, it it is a very um, it is a very tumultuous time in the industry at the moment. You're right. There is an actor lockdown happening in the voice world right now, as well as as well as in the um in the film and tv industry and essentially like without going too deep into it like a lot of union actors have been locked out because of a a discourse between uh a union and a and a uh, sort of agency yeah and so and it's all about like disparity of wage increase and them not wanting to increase which is a kind of a, a douchey move because they you know have the have the money but point is Mm -hmm. you're absolutely right like it is voice actors are banding together there is a lot of you know work being done thankfully in the animation world we are we are knock on wood in a good in a great place we're very still much still very much where we were it's more in the commercial side of things where this is happening um Mind you, I do a lot of commercial voice work, so I'm definitely seeing uh, that side of my work come to a screeching halt at the moment. Um, and there's been a lot of animation that I've been uh, both auditioning for and working on in the last uh, few months. But that that's sort of like animation sort of my go-to anyway between the two. <laughs> but uh, I do hope it comes back, and I, I do feel, yes, camaraderie is key. 
what do you so going back to uh bakugan and uh yeah we have that really great message voice actors band together support voice actors by the way uh, but going back yes. to uh back by going back to uh bakugan have you seen the toy for have you seen the real life toy for your partner bakugan nobilius who cory doran voices uh but have you seen the real life toy for your uh for your partner bakugan nobilius that the giant red chicken <laughs> Yes. Uh, in fact, I've held it in my hands, and it's so funny because you're not the first to ask me this, but I did not buy it because I'm stupid. I was at the store, and I was literally holding it, and I, I literally was like, I will buy this next time I come out because I took a picture of it, and I think it was like something stupid. Like, I didn't have my wallet with me or something, and then I was also like, they should be sending me this. Uh you should! <laughs> you should. Um, but I but I was like, I will buy this next time I'm here. And then, of course, I came back literally two days later and it was gone. And then I was like, I'll just get it next time I see it. And I've literally never seen it again um, in person. Oh, so man. So I, I will. Uh, let's put it out to the world, to the universe, that that toy needs to be sent my way. <laughs> Yes, uh, definitely. So I don't know. I don't know if uh, you're aware of this, but no. But when no, when uh, the first year of Bakugan came out, uh, Nobilius was actually one of the meta Bakugan, like the really good ones. Right. I think that is why it was very scarce because everybody wanted it. It was very good. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Literally, like. I had a feeling it was something like that, but uh, it it was it's just so funny how uh, that happens, right? Like it can come and go, and it and it's it is very much to true testament to the Bakugan community. Like I, I think it's an amazing community. I love the support. I love the you know the passion. Talk about passion in the acting booth, but there's also like passion from the fans, and you know to this day I get you know, I get a lot of fan mail, both from Bakugan and Beyblade, and, and it's really fun to read, and people are just awesome. Like, it's just such... The anime community in general is just so awesome. Yeah, that's uh, definitely a really great thing about the uh, an, uh, Bakugan and anime community. We really appreciate all the voice actors that went behind it, because, you know, you guys all give a really passionate performance uh, with uh, all your work. And, like, you give a more passionate performance more than you than Bakugan has ever right to have, so <laughs> a lot of the times but you got but it's entertaining nonetheless uh there is yeah. like a lot there is like a lot of uh a lot of uh bakugan that have uh had a lot have a lot of screen time and all that nobil uh nobilius uh obviously you're being the partner bakugan he has layers that it that are the same as duran right and uh i think mm -hmm. cory doran uh, plays a role really great as uh, nobilius and plays off of uh Dur duran's character perfectly Nobilius seem Nobilius and Duran seem like they have like a really same interconnected relationship. Uh, do you do you sometimes wish that uh, Duran had a bigger role so that you can see Nobilius like go wild and evolve? <laughs> oh, absolutely! I've had that thought before. Like I, you know, I I'm I'm a big cheerleader for for any type of first of all any type of partnership on screen like that. I think is really cool. Um, but yeah, it's sort of like you know for me I. I don't, I don't take anything for granted, and like I really just enjoyed everything with Duran that that uh, I was able to experience. And then it's you know I'm still a big fan of the show and the world, and I'll still kind of take it in. And and you know I I feel like I'm still I still have a feeling that Duran in some way, shape, or form will be will be back on screen and it's funny because i joked with the creative team that duran needs his own show and they literally were like they were laughing and then they were like you know what that's not a bad idea <laughs> <laughs> and i was like one day duran is gonna come back with his own show he's such a great character to have his own show and uh and so i'm holding out for that i feel like duran could actually be have his own show but like it would be a series that is put on the bakugan youtube channel where like uh, I want to say Duran does like a lot of com comedy uh, acts uh, with yes. Bakugan, and like for some, for example, maybe Drago can fly in, and Duran can like do something goofy with Nobilius and Drago, uh, but then there Drago like incinerates him, and then le and then flies away, <laughs> going back to Dan, and Duran like puffs like is in black and like puffs smoke out, and then faints, and then that then that would be something really funny. 
Yeah, I feel like he just needs to, like, he needs to, like, disappear or die at the end of every episode, and then he always comes back in the next one. Like, I feel like that's, like, that should be Duran's, like, series, his, like, internet series. It's like, he's back again uh, every single episode. I just think that would be a lot of fun, and it would be such a cool, uh, he'd obviously host the show, too. Yes, <laughs> obviously. <laughs> <laughs> he'd do, like, dramatic narration. He's like, and we're back. <laughs> I know there's a. L- I know I've been pitching a lot for a Magnus spinoff <laughs> a lot, but uh, and like with like occasional appearances from like uh, Duran or Marco and all that being like an antagonist roles and uh, and all that. But I really, I really do think that maybe Duran does have a spot in uh, like a spinoff or a feature series uh, that people can that people can watch. And you and uh, you know uh, if that happens, we'll. We'll be there to watch it because, like, it's a pretty, he's a funny character and he's something he really that is. a lot of people love to laugh at or love to hate on. <laughs> Which I'm all for all of that. Like, if love him or hate him, he's there, right? Like, that's the and and yeah, I agree. I, I think it's gonna happen. I think we've put the energy out there and it's, we're gonna make it happen. It's gonna be there somewhere at some point. You and I'll be like back talking again and we'll be like, remember that time when we were like, a spin-off series would be great and then it's happening that's gonna, been my life <laughs> i'm gonna cl- i want them to i want people to clip just that part where we talked about it <laughs> yes if that's a one part happen, that i want internet. clipped it's that part if people are clipping like my and you know what and all that. you can you can voice all of the background characters in that series <laughs> oh my god if you can get me that role i would be so happy <laughs> <laughs> let's do it let's make it happen <laughs> although i'd probably be screaming like ah <laughs> that's okay we'd make it work uh but i don't okay so one more question before uh we wrap this up uh but i don't know if you can answer this and you don't have to answer okay. it if it violates any kind of nda or anything uh are you gonna uh are you voicing any characters in legends <laughs> mm. Uh, that is one I cannot answer. <laughs> oh, because okay. we have because Emily Stranges has uh, posted uh, an Instagram. St- uh, the reason why I asked is because she posted an Instagram story. There was a TV monitor or something where it says "Welcome Emily, Jason, Shargill, and like the first names of actors uh, and stuff. So, but so uh, yeah. so that's so that's why <laughs> that's how we know a lot of how some a lot of characters are returning. <laughs> yeah. Um. As far as I know. And as far as I can say, there is some dialogue happening, um, but I can't, I don't know anything beyond that, and I can't say anything beyond that. So, how's that for cryptic? <laughs> <laughs> take, fans can take that as much as they will, because, the, uh, because like, Bakugan has become sort of like Marvel or something. People are trying to, like, find the <laughs> smallest kind of reaching leak <laughs> to, like, get hints and all that. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. No, I I think it's it's really too early to say, and I think that um, I I definitely don't know as much as you may think I know. So let's just leave it at that. <laughs> <laughs> so you're so you're saying that you are. <laughs> <laughs> I did not say that. <laughs> Uh, I'm the worst detective ever. <laughs> let's just say, let's just say it would be great. It would be awesome, and it, you know, D- Duran does have a habit of always coming back, so it would be wonderful. I would really enjoy it, and I would love it. But if not, I would love him to have his own series. So there you go. All right, fans, take that as uh, take that as you will. Let the speculation begin. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, but yeah, thank uh, again. Thank you so much for uh, coming on to the show. It's been a real honor. Thank you so much for reaching out. Uh, and you know, this has been a really fun conversation. Yeah, likewise. I, I it's been great. It's been great to connect with you. I really enjoyed it. Thanks for the chat. Thanks for bringing me into your world. And you know, g- good luck with everything you're doing. It's awesome. Hi, right, thank you so much. And uh, and likewise, the good luck with everything you're doing. We we look forward to whatever comes next. Uh, uh, and uh, one more thing I want to ask you uh, for two live queers. When's the next live show? Oh, awesome. Yeah, we are doing a uh, we're currently working on a live uh, like an actual physical live, an- another physical live show in Toronto at the comedy bar. But we're also uh, 
this I can tell you. We are in early stages for a uh, for a, a TV series. So we're working on a um, sort of a, a pilot episode at the moment. Uh, we have a pretty major player in the Canadian film and television industry who is sort of backing us or in, you know involved at the moment and we're hoping to bring it to the screen in a similar to like a Saturday Night Live sort of energy like where it's vignettes of different scenes different you know same actors playing different characters so that's kind of my jam and we're we're really excited for that that's awesome and I can't and uh, can't wait for can't wait for that everybody catch two live queers uh uh, coming live in Toronto, uh, and where can they find you on uh, on social media? Instagram, Twitter. Uh, you, can, yeah, you can find. So first of all, Instagram. You can follow me at Tony Babcock Actor on Instagram, and uh, Two Live Queers is also on Instagram. If you uh, love all things improv and all things queer, you can join us there. That's very that's very awesome. Yeah, definitely follow Tony Tony Babcock on uh, Instagram and Two Live Queers. All links in the description below. Uh, but thank you so much again, Tony Babcock, for uh, joining us on the Box Talking Longer podcast. It's been a really big pleasure to have you on board, and uh, we can't wait for Bakugan Legends to maybe you appear. Maybe I never said that. <laughs> just for the record. <laughs> hey, thank yeah, you. Speculation run wild. But thank you so much, everyone, for watching and listening to the Box Talking Longer podcast. Let's, uh, support Box Talk by pressing the thumbs up and give us a subscribe for more awesome Bakugan content. I've been Haru Ren. This has been the voice of Duran, Dane, Tony Babcock, and thank God for Rapid Fire. Bakugan Brawl! <laughs> <laughs>